Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Thank you. I was blessed with 78 years with my precious mom. And when I think of her, I think of her walking on streets of gold. She may be carrying my daughter piggyback. I don't know all about ages, all that. Do you? I don't. So I don't know. In my mind, she's 20 eight now almost so she may she may be too big to be on my mom's back but they may be sitting on the feet of, at the feet of Jesus right now and she's probably saying not long but your mom dad and two brothers are coming soon so that's what I think so uh, anyway I truly feel so blessed uh, another blessing is this ray of sunshine that's standing beside me and I started to know Rachel when she took a group of girls at a conference. And from then on, she's never ceased to amaze me. And how she's always so excited to pour her life into teens, children, and other ladies. And not only did she pour her life into my two sons, but uh, there has not ever been a time when she hasn't lifted me up 10 feet to feel 10 feet tall. So thank you, Rachel, for taking the time to be so great to me. Aww. Isn't that sweet? We should just end this now. <laughs> thank you. Um, and just I want to introduce to you Leslie Thomas, for those of you who may not know um, her. She is our pastor's wife. They've been here for about 20 years, which is pretty awesome. Um, I've known her personally for about 12, but really the last eight years really getting to know her um, kind of more intimately. So I think that we kind of share a lot of things in common, which I so love. Um, she runs our ladies' ministry here. So if you are a lady and you're not in our ladies' ministry, we would love for you to get involved, and she is the person who runs it. But not only does she run our ladies' ministry here, she's a full-time kindergarten teacher, so she's running around all day, and then after she's done that, or actually during sometimes on her lunch breaks, she, I know she's texting and calling ladies, she texts me during the day, during her lunch breaks, and she's just constantly thinking and pouring up into other people. Um, she's taken me with her on hospital visits, which is awesome, because I just love to sit back and kind of watch her teach me how to do it. I mean, it's just talking and relating to people, but it, sometimes you, it can be nerve wracking a little bit. And so I love having her there to kind of guide me. Um, also, she super thinks about everybody. This lady, I don't get to always eat on Wednesdays because it's kind of a crazy day. And she always like pops in my office and smiles at me and brings like Taco Bell. And it's so <laughs> sweet. And we share, it's like literally one of the highlights of my life because it's a small thing. But the fact that she just thinks about me and knows to do that, and then we share it. And she always lets me pick first. She says, here's what we have. What do you want? And I'm just, I take what I want. So she's very, very selfless. Um, another thing we love is half price appetizers at Applebee's. So sometime if you're in there, you may find us eating some wonton tacos and just laughing. And I just appreciate the time that she spends with me and encourages me. She's constantly asking me, what can she do to help me? How can she, you know, cut something or what, what do I need? And I love that because she is so busy herself but yet she still thinks about me. And many of you guys have probably experienced that with her um, as she's called you, as she's prayed for you, as she's brought you a meal. So truly, we are very, very lucky to have her. And I would encourage all of you to be praying for her because sometimes when you're doing all the pouring, not as many people pour back into you. So pray for our pastor's wife. Text her and tell her to have an awesome day. Uh, just let her know you're thinking about her because it's hard sometimes and, and we love her. So let her know that you love her. Okay, our hope it is today to talk about mentoring someone. And Rachel's gonna get in a little more detail about mentoring someone. But I when I think about mentoring someone, I think about investing my life in others. So some of you may be overthinking this and thinking, um, gosh, does that mean that they have to, I have to invite them over every week for dinner? Um, what all does this mean? Do I, does that mean I have to have a Bible study with them every week? But Rachel's gonna take off and, and begin our little sermonette. So Rachel, you go right ahead. All right. If you want, I'm not going to go there just yet, but if you want to read along with me in the Bible when we do, we're going to be in First Kings to start off with. And if you want to go ahead and head there now while I kind of talk. Um, as Leslie and I were kind of preparing and planning this, we were trying to decide, you know, how do we speak to moms? 
How do we speak to women? How do we also speak to the men, right? Because we're all in here today. Hopefully, we're going to learn something. So we kind of looked in the Bible for those who mentored and poured into other people. And we kind of we came across Elijah and Elisha. So today, I'm going to give us kind of some of the background of them. Um, basically, they were some of the, God's greatest prophets in the Bible. And you can find their story in First and Second Kings. And their ministry spanned for about eight years. Uh, that we learn about in the Bible. So mentor is just a word. Um, it's a little bit bigger than friendship, right? It's more than just our family, our very close friends. Sometimes we can mentor and pour into those people. But where we're talking about today is mentoring and pouring into other people that are in need, not just the ones who we immediately see. And these are two men who did a lot of great things. Um, Leslie has poured into me over the years. She has checked in on me, like I said earlier. She has walked roads with me that not everybody can walk with me. And I have so appreciated that because we have some of these common bonds together, that she's taken that time to say, let me pour into Rachel. So that's where we're going to talk about Elijah and Elijah today. I want to give you a little background on Elijah first, in case you don't know. He's the older one. He was a prophet, and during the time in the book of Kings, we go through this cycle where you have kings who are awesome. They love the Lord, they're serving, they're leading the people to follow him. And then, unfortunately, we have a lot of strings of bad kings. And at this time, um, Ahab, King Ahab is here, and him and his wife Jezebel, they serve Baal, who is the god of like rain and storms. And Elijah comes along and he wants everybody to know who the real god is. So Elijah says, basically, there's going to be a drought in the land. And of course, King Ahab feels that that's a direct challenge to his god. And so they kind of have this competition, if you will. And Elijah says, let's build these altars. We're going to bring down the fire, all this stuff, and see who's, whose god is bigger. Well, on that day, the Baal did not show up at all. He was nowhere to be seen. He did not answer their prayers. He didn't answer their calls. He was a no-show. But God, who is the creator of the universe, showed up in big and mighty ways when Elijah prays and calls for him. And that really kind of makes King Ahab mad because he's very into himself. He's very into his power, and he doesn't like being shown up. So Elijah has to run and flee into the mountains. And that's kind of where we're going to start today, so you just know where we're at a little bit. So if you want to join me in 1 Kings chapter 19, I'm just going to read you about three verses about what takes place when Elijah leaves and he flees into, um, it's Mount Horeb, but it's also known as Mount Sinai. Those of you who know, that's where Moses met with the Lord. So that is where he is at. So it says, so he, Elijah, sent out from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphath, who was plowing. There were 12 yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was the 12th. Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And Elijah said to him, go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, took the yokes of the oxen, and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled his flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. And he set out and followed Elijah and became a servant. So the first things I kind of want to talk to you here, and I actually didn't read the scripture above, it talks about on this mountain, Elijah is praying to the Lord about what he should do. Where should he go? What's the Lord's next step for him? And God tells him, I want you to go find Elisha. And I want you to pour into his life. And that's where we just read. So Elijah, he goes out to find him. And he doesn't find him praying in a synagogue. He doesn't find him ministering and doing all these things. He finds him in his field plowing. And he simply says to him, come with me. And Elijah does it immediately. He goes, he says goodbye to his family. But he says, yes. I'm all in. I want to learn from you. I want you to pour into me. And so the first thing is that Elijah had to be intentional about who he was picking. He had to ask the Lord, show me who, who can I see? Who can I help? Who are you wanting to use me with? And God told him. The second thing is Elisha had to be open to being mentored. He could have said, hey, I'm busy. I'm working in these fields. I kind of got a lot going on. But he didn't. It says he dropped it immediately and then he went, and not even that, 
Once he said goodbye to his family, he killed his oxen, sold all of his equipment and his belongings, and he went with Elijah 100% and just said, teach me. So we have to be able to be willing to mentor others, but we have to also be willing to be mentored is our first part. Okay, is your heart ready to mentor someone or is your heart ready to be mentored? And a lot of us think, I've heard this so many times, I'm not a people person. Okay, number one, we are, we have the Holy Spirit living within our lives. We're Christians. So we, whether you like it or not, we are in the people business. Now, th that does not mean that you have to, you have to have a flamboyant personality. Some of the, some of our awesome ladies that mentor other people are, have the sweetest, mildest disposition, but behind closed doors or on the phone, they are mentoring so many different people. You just have to be open, you have to be approachable, and you have to be actively seeking God. And I, some of you think, well, what if I'm rejected? I think out of the last, I was thinking about this the other day, out of about 12 years, I think I've only been shunned one time. And when I kept calling this person, or, <laughs> I just kept getting one-word answers. And I would text or call, and then finally they just did not take my phone calls anymore. So, but you know what? I didn't stop. I didn't let that discourage me because I just said, God, lead me to somebody else. Another excuse is I don't have time. Mm -hmm. Have you heard that excuse before? Yes. <laughs> well, you know what? Looking over our congregation, even if you're a stay-at-home mom, you work hard, don't you? Very, very hard. And it just seems like when you're away, the house stays okay, but when you're home, there's just always something to do. And some of us are working 45 to 50 hours a week, plus you have other obligations. All this is is that you are making a connection. Use church time to begin. If you don't know what else to do, Use church time. Approach someone you don't know. Uh, you can have, it may sound silly, but you can have a texting ministry. On weeks that maybe there's not a lot of people in the hospital, sometimes I'll set aside a Tuesday and a Thursday, and I just start texting people. There are so many needs in this church. If all you did was mentor people in this church, you could be busy from now till the rapture. So <laughs> this is... it. You, of course, and I, I try to mentor people outside of our church, people that I work with or other friends. But I'm just saying, if you only ministered, mentored people in our church, you could be busy all the time. And it's not a bad kind of busy. It's a good kind of, kind of busy. It's a two-way street. We got together a few times to talk about this, and we kept repeating what each, other's, what each other had in our notes. But it's a two-way street. You can't bless other people or be a blessing and not get blessed just right back into, in return. Um, let me tell you, personally, I keep every encouraging text that I get, every encouraging card that I get. Um, it's as easy as sending a scripture. Um, I have someone that sends me scriptures once a week, and I'm just so excited to open them because I, somebody's thinking about me enough to send something to me. Okay, this may sound silly, but girls, ladies, you understand this. If all you can do is send an emoji, <laughs> send an emoji. Now, ladies, don't be sending them to married men. You only send them to ladies. That's supposed to be a joke. <laughs> so. But we, we like hearts. <laughs> that didn't go over very good. <laughs> we have... Ladies, we love, I like to get a heart, even a little, like a kiss blown to me. It sounds trivial, but you don't realize what just that little, just that little act can do. Um, some people may say, I'm not spiritual enough. I've heard that a lot. And I'm going to address this in just a little bit. But above all, if you're daily marinating yourself, even if you can just do two or three scriptures, that's what I'm starting to focus on. Focus on two or three scriptures and then write it down in your own words and meditate on that and pray. And that's what I'm going to be talking about a little bit. Uh, some people say, I'm, I, don't, I may not know what to say to, to someone. 
uh, I went to our ladies uh, conference we go to and Sheila Walsh says, just show up. Just be there for someone. I've walked into a hospital. I've knocked on a door. I've, phone, I've called someone. Didn't know what in the world I was going to say. And I just said, Lord, give me the words to say. Give me the wisdom to know exactly what, what this person needs. And sometimes I don't know what to say. So I just listen. A lot of times people just need a friend to talk to. Now, um, in saying this, I'm going to put in a little plug for our ladies' ministry. We have eight ladies' leaders in our church. Can you raise your hand, please, if you're a ladies' leader? Okay. So, these ladies are awesome. There is not a time when I call them and I've had a need and they've ministered to me. Sometimes you're not ready to mentor someone and that's okay. Sometimes you need to be mentored. There was about a year and a half where I was, I was not in the place to mentor people. Not that I couldn't be nice and call and stuff, but I was so consumed with my mother's illness that that's all I could think about at that time. But let me tell you, and I'm going to say that it, it doesn't take much. Susie Cooper, is she in here today? I think she may be cutting some stuff for our ladies' ministry. <laughs> but anyway, she showed up at school one day, and I was going to leave the next day to go see my mom in the hospital. She was in ICU. She brought me this huge box. And with tears in her eyes, she said, I can't, I can't do anything else. But I can make your mom some bread, some chocolate chip banana bread. So I took that with me. And every morning in ICU, my mom would say, Let, she would wake up and she'd say, Leslie, are we ready to have our banana bread, our chocolate chip banana bread? So every time I think of Susie Cooper, I think of her coming to the school. And whenever she knew I was going to Texas, she would just come and bring me that banana bread. So she constantly asks about my mom. Sometimes that's all it takes is just asking how someone's doing. Um, also, talking about our ladies' ministry, so I don't forget at the end, we have an activity coming up. And go in the back, we have the cutest little invitations, and it's going to be what I call a 50s bash. There'll be lots of fun contests, fun music, photos, laughs, wear your 50s attire. So this is an awesome way. If, you're trying, if you want to mentor someone and you're like, I don't, I don't know what I should say, bring them to an activity. Then you don't have to do the talking. Just bring them in where they can get to know people. And then from there, you can start a relationship. Okay, Ms. Rachel is going to talk about using our lives. Yes. Okay, so I need a little participation for a second. And I want you to look around while we do this, okay? So the first thing is I want you to raise your hand if any of you who have ever walked through any kind of trial. Could be a little trial, anything. Mm. So if you look around, most of us are raising our hands. Now I want you to keep your hand up if you've walked through a very difficult trial. Because there's, we have trials and then there's things that are really, really hard. So if you're looking around, we've got all these people who have walked through difficult things. They've gone before us in certain circumstances, right? Oh, sorry, you can put your hands down. Um, they've gone before us, right? They have walked through it. Some of us may be walking through trials right now, and some of us have already come out on the other side of that trial, maybe getting ready to go into another one. Mm -hmm. But all of us can agree that we have walked through things, and we can use those to help other people. So we want to kind of talk about, for a second, pouring out of our pain. Um, it's nice when somebody... Okay, let me be careful with the word nice. It's encouraging when somebody who has walked through a very hard thing, and they're willing to pour it into you and to share with you. Now, I'm not talking about they're going to share all the gory details and they're just going to kind of complain. It's saying, hey, I've walked this road also. I can get, you know, we have similar feelings on it. And I can show you how the Lord has worked in my life, how he has helped me through that. And hopefully I then am an encouragement to you. And I'll tell you, um, you know, Leslie has done that for me. A lot of people have encouraged me. But her and I have walked a similar road with loss of children. And she comes and cries with me and she comes and she texts me even just a couple weeks ago she started asking me questions you know kind of when everyone moves on during the trial and you're either still in it but everyone's kind of we all have our own lives and we're going on she always continues to remember to come and just say hey how is your heart and then i cry and it's you know all great but it's too. because we identify together 
And so we're able to do that. Sometimes when we're walking through trials, it feels incredibly lonely. Even though we know, we all raised our hands, other people are walking a similar thing or some kind of a trial, it's very hard to maybe sometimes express the way we're feeling. I used to tell my mom, who, uh, when I was walking through some of this, she wouldn't leave me alone. I was like, please leave me alone. I don't, I can't, like, I told her I'm not fit for public, is what I said to her. And she just kept coming over. And I was like, I appreciated that because she didn't care that I was maybe ugly or mean or broken and sad. She just continued to come over and meet with me and she just let me be ugly. And I didn't have to, I mean, I felt bad. I had to apologize a lot, but I just appreciated that she was always there and doing that. Um, how many of you go work out? Does anyone go to like classes and you love it? Okay, you're a little weird, but that's okay. <laughs> but I wanted to make a point using that. Have you ever gone to a, the YMCA and you have a class and you're in there and you have an instructor? You have somebody who knows all the moves. They know it's gonna get intense. You may feel like you're gonna die and you don't wanna keep going and they stand there and they encourage you. And they say, hey, 90 more seconds. And you think to yourself, I can go 90 more seconds. Maybe just 10 would be better, but I can go a little bit longer because this person's telling me it's about to end. That's kind of how I feel about pouring into others through our pain is we can say to them, hey, this is ugly and it's hard, but it's going to get better. Like it's going to end. And maybe we can't put a timeline on when it's going to end, but we can assure people it's going to get better. Leslie always tells me there was a time when she would cry and she wasn't sure, but she saw people coming and just, they were smiling, people who'd walked similar things, and she knew one day she would smile about it again. And that's what she shared with me, and I knew one day I'm going to smile about this again. So we've got to pour into each other, and we've got to use the things in our lives, because for one, I am a huge believer. If I've had to walk some ugly stuff, man, I want it to be for something. How can I find the good in it? How can I use this to bless somebody else? Maybe that's how I behave during. Maybe I say, listen, I'm not fit for public, but I still love the Lord and I still know that he's good no matter what's going on in my life. And I know that the Bible says that he works all things for my good, even when it doesn't feel good. So your perspective is so important of how can you do that? Because people are always watching you. And it doesn't mean you have to be perfect. It doesn't mean that you don't be ugly a little bit, but you know that God is bigger than what you're walking through. And so use that to help other people. Um, we are going to read a little bit more about our story. If you want to flip over to 2 Kings, just a couple pages over in chapter 2, I'll give you a little bit more of a background here. Elijah and Elisha have now been doing ministry for a while, and Elisha loves Elijah. He doesn't want him to leave. He doesn't want him to go, but Elijah's preparing him that the Lord is going to be taking him soon, and he's going to have to take over as the mentor, as the main leader. And Elijah, in the scriptures right before that I'm not going to read, he keeps saying, uh, don't go just yet. And they keep walking throughout the day to different places. And Elijah says, it's coming soon. And he's trying to prepare Elisha for what's going to happen next. So in 2 Kings 2, I'm going to read verses 9 through 14. It says, when they had crossed the Jordan River, uh, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have, been given a or you have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it will not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father! the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. And then he took hold of his garment and he tore it in two. Elisha then picked up Elijah's cloak that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah, he asked. And when he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over it, which is what Elijah had just done with him moments before. So... Elijah, Elisha, is probably, he's mourning a little bit the loss of his friend, the loss of his buddy, but he also knows that it is his time to, to really go, to start pouring into other people. And one thing about their relationship is it wasn't just Elijah pouring into Elisha. 
Because Elisha, as he, as he learned, and as you all know, some of us have good days and bad days, right? Sometimes Elijah was probably having a bad day, and Elisha then continued to mentor him. Just like Leslie said, there's times when you set out to mentor somebody else, and you end up receiving the blessing from that relationship, from that mentoring, because we all have things that we can share. And so you, it goes two ways. But right now, Elisha is going to continue on. And although he's sad, he ends up going on and he, um, he does a lot of things for life. He brings a boy through miracles, through the Lord's power, he brings a boy back to life. He ends up um, saving a whole, I think, village from like there's a poisonous stew and he came in and saved them all. He fed a, a huge group of men with very little food. So he went along and continued to do these things which created life in other people through the death of his friend. And he did that because he wanted to continue on that path. If each of us takes time to pour into one other person, maybe two other people, and then that person then continues on, can you guys imagine what our church would be like, what our state would be like, I mean our entire country, if we all continue to pe keep pouring into other people, Ooh. it would be so much better. We would be encouraged and we would hopefully be following Christ through this and encouraging others to do the same. If Leslie comes and talks to me and all I do is just complain and, and whine and we just want to gripe about people or whatever, which we would never do. No. We would never. Never. So we love everybody. But um, if that's all we did, are we going to be able to then go help other people? I may then go find someone else to complain about and be like, oh, Leslie shared the story with me about these people. And, and we just will get worked up into that and we're just spreading negativity. Whereas if I go to Leslie and she says, Rachel, you got to calm down a little bit. And she starts to talk to me. I can then get some reality and get, some, get my spirit in check. And then I'm able to then go pour into other people. So be a person who also calls people out in love. I have another friend who I know. If I have somebody, something says somebody, somebody says something to me, I call her and I'm like, tell me if this is true. Because I don't know if that person's right or not. But I'm like, you will tell me. And so have people be the kind of person that other people can call and say, speak truth to me. Um, I think that's all. Okay, preach it, Rachel. I'm getting a lot out of this lady right here. Where? Whew. Oh. You guys are weird. Okay, you're asking yourself, Sorry. where, so where do I start? Where's the best place, best place to start? Ask, sorry, ask God to change you. When you pray, earnestly pray, ask God to change you. If we are honest with ourselves. Sometimes we don't want to be honest with ourselves. I know I don't want to be honest about myself sometimes. But if we're truly honest with ourselves, that we, we know through prayer that God can and, can and will reveal what our hearts need to do. Now when I prayed, I, I went through, there was a couple years where I was praying, God change this person, change this person, be with them. They're just not doing very good. When I stopped that, and I said, God, change me. And like the woman that touched the garment of the Lord, I just was relentless. Like my kindergartners are relentless. They are constantly grabbing me and poking me all day long. Got 20 of them. That's how I want to do sometimes to God. And he wants us to do that. He wants us to be relentless in pursuing him. When I started doing that, miraculously, my world became brighter. I don't know why, because God needed to change everybody else. He didn't need to change me. Well, I started working on me. God started working on me. And I'm happy to say I'm a lot more joyful for it. I'm not constantly trying to uh, change my family, change coworkers. I just say, it's enough, Lord, that I focus on doing what I need to do. And you know what? I've been, um, I've been joyful through the hard times in my life. And what's awesome about mentoring is you search for people that have gone through what you've gone through because you may have been through that valley and you're now... You're out of that valley, and God's filled your heart with joy. And you can now, people can say, wow, she's smiling. If she's, that sounds silly, but I remember somebody came to my house about a month after we buried our little girl. 
And this lady did not know me. She just heard about me from someone and she knocked on my door and brought me a cake and just sat down and listened. That's all somebody needs sometimes. That's all mentoring is. And she was smiling and she was happy and full of joy. And so that, just that one thing, I just kept thinking, yes, it took a while, took a long time, but I did smile again and I was happy again. Then pray that he will change the way we see people. Wow, that's a big one. Change the way that we see people. That means actively looking around. Every Sunday, I kid you not, every Sunday there's someone crying. You're probably thinking, yeah, for a year and a half it was you. Yeah, it was me. But I weathered that storm. Yes, I'm, I miss my mom terribly. And in fact, today I shared this with Rachel and I asked her if she thought it was appropriate to say, but I'm going to go ahead and say it because she thought it was kind of funny. But uh, my mother was disheartened for the last 10 years that hosiery was no longer a part of a woman's apparel. <laughs> that hosiery was no longer seen in the church. What was going to happen? Mm. So mom... I'm wearing hosiery just for you today because so. <laughs> I don't like hosiery. So actively look around. And when I see someone sad or crying, um, it's like God saying, hello, big neon, big neon arrows right here. This person needs someone. And then pray, last but not least, pray for wisdom. Oops, I forgot a scripture. From my other notes, sorry. Where's the best place to start? Ask God to change you. Psalms 13, 24. See if there is any wicked way in me. Not my husband. Not my children. Not my friends. God, take a magnifying glass and show me. A lot of times we already know, don't we? And we don't even want to go to, we don't want to pray about it because we don't want to stop doing it. Rachel? You ever felt like that? Yes. <laughs> you guys need to tell me if I'm doing something. No. No, you do. But I'm saying that just to say that if we work on ourselves, then we're going we're gonna to be able to minister to people so much better. And pray for wisdom. In James 1.5, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Now, when you do this, guess what? You've got to ask God in faith without doubt. How many of you have prayed for something? I'm praying about something in my life right now, and the hardest thing to do is to daily give it back to the Lord because there's doubt. And I thought, well, okay, why am I bringing it to the Lord every day if I don't believe he's going to do what he says he's going to do? He may not answer exactly when we think. It may be yes, it may be no, it may be wait. But ask God without doubt. Um, and then ask God. I, I am by nature a very shy person. So throughout the years, I've just had to ask God for boldness. And I used to think boldness, I could never, ever be bold. And I'm not, I'm not meaning it in a brash way. But ask God for boldness if you're shy. And be relentless with these prayers. Now, you have a choice today. His will will be done with or without you. I don't ever want the Lord to pass me by and say, well, Leslie's got another excuse. She's got another excuse. She's too busy. Um, she's not reading the Bible enough. Now, that's very important to saturate yourself. But sometimes Satan can put those little thoughts into your head and say, you're not good enough. You don't speak well in front of people. You have anxiety issues, so don't even try. But through God, everything is possible. So I want to end on this little statement. You don't know, but you may be the answer to someone's prayer. So. Yes. So as Justin comes up here, um, Leslie and I were kind of talking about, like, as we've gone through this whole thing, we really want to have an opportunity for us to each come and pray together. 
Um, we talked about mentoring people in our church and also outside. Sometimes, like she just said, you might be the answer to somebody's prayer. And are we looking and taking those opportunities? Um, this last week, a random lady, I was selling like some dresses on Facebook and she was going to get them. And then she had to cancel because um, she thought she was losing her baby. And I have no clue who this lady is. And I just was like, maybe this is creepy or weird. But I just started trying to, I said, can I pray for you? And I just shared a, just a tiny bit of my thing. And this lady says to me, I am a believer. She said, but I am very shy. I'm very introverted. We're not telling anybody we're walking through this. And she said, thank you for just talking to me and you don't even know who I am. So are we looking for those moments? But guys, we also have to be willing to share that we're having those moments. Because like I said, we all raised our hands. In a room this size, I guarantee you, we have people who are going through marital stuff. We have people who are going through financial stuff. We have people who are going through kids stuff where your kids are, are often being prodigals. There are sickness and death, there is so much. And if nobody knows because you're just keeping it in, we can't start to pour into those, right? So be willing to say, hey, I need help. I need somebody who's going to pray for me because my marriage is falling apart and I don't know what to do instead of silently suffering. So right now what we're going to ask is that you guys would just spend some time in prayer. We'd love for you to come up here and ask the Lord, Lord, who can I share my story with? Who can I mentor and pour into the things that I've come out on the other side and you are so good and the hope that you brought me I can share to somebody else? Ask him to open your eyes. Maybe you need to come up here and say, Lord, I'm in a rough spot and I need you to send me somebody. And just come up here and ask him to do that because he will do it. But we have to be willing to be faithful on both sides and take the steps. So we're just gonna spend a couple minutes in prayer and I would encourage you guys to do the same.